Welcome to Master Middle School Math. This video can be used as a model for teachers to teach their own students. It can also be used by students to learn math, and it can also be used by parents as a model to help their own children. Today we will solve percentage problems using percentage sentences. If you're already very solid on using proportions to solve percentages, that's okay. This is just a different way to do it. Here's some background information. I just want you to think about this always and keep this in mind. Percent means of 100. That's what the word means. And a quick, easy way to remember that is to look at the percentage sign and you've got the 1, 0, 0, 100. See? So here is our percentage sentence. This is the format. This is what it will always look like. You're going to read it from left to right like you read a written sentence. We're going to take our written sentence and convert it into mathematical sentence. So the first blank is always the original amount, the principal. Of means that you're going to use the operation of multiplication, so you can have a time symbol. And then percentage gets converted to a decimal number, and we will talk about that later to do the computation. Is means the equal sign, and the answer is the product of the question. So let's look at a written sentence. What is? So what means we don't know. That's a question. So is is the clue. So it's going to be the answer we're looking for. 50% is going to be converted into a decimal number, so that goes into the decimal uh, blank. Of 100 is our clue, so we're multiplying 100. 100 is going to be our principal amount, so let's write it down in a mathematical form. 100 times 0.50 equals, we don't know, we're looking for that. Remember how we talked about changing a percentage into a decimal number in order to do the computation to do the arithmetic? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. So our first step is just to eliminate the percentage sign. Then we're going to move the decimal point two places to the left. And you might say, I don't see a decimal point. But let me tell you a little secret. Every number has a decimal point. Sometimes it's in the beginning, sometimes it's in the middle, and sometimes it's at the end. If it's at the end of the number, it almost always is invisible. But it's still there. It's just invisible. So we're going to write it in to remind us that it's there, even though it's invisible. We're going to move it two places to the left. One, two. You always, always move it two places to the left. And you might say, how will I remember in what direction to move it? Well, what I do is I think about the alphabet. The alphabet is something we all know. It's been in front of the classroom forever. You probably sang songs about it in kindergarten. So when you look at the alphabet, D is to the left of P. And the word decimal starts with D. And the word percent starts with P. So when we're going from percent to decimal, we go two places to the left because D is to the left of P. So here's our 50%. Let's do it again very quickly. You eliminate the sign. You move your decimal point that's invisible. You move it two places to the left because you're going from percent to decimal, P to D. Now here's our percentage sentence. And we have the original. This is the structure of percent is the answer, the product. We have a question here. What is 40% of 150? So in this case, we're looking for the answer. What is? Is gives us the little hint there. So we're going to rewrite our problem mathematically, reading it from left to right. 150 is going to go into the principal uh, slot of, we're going to change 40% to 0.40, is we don't know. We're going to find out that answer. So we do the math. 150 times 0.40 equals 60. Here is another sentence that we're going to read from left to right. And now we're going to fill in the blanks. But first we have to figure out what we're looking for. In this case, 25 is what percent of 250? What percent? So in this case, we're looking for the percent. So when we fill in our blanks, 250 of question mark is 25. So we've noticed that you've put in uh, numbers and symbols in different places based on the question. Now, when we have our normal problem with both parts of the question and we're trying to find the answer, the product, we multiply. In this case, we have the answer already and we're looking for part of the question. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is division. 
And so we have 25 divided by 250 equals 0.10. Now 0.10 is a decimal number. We're looking for a percentage. So we're going to do the opposite of what we did before we went from percent to decimal. Now we're going to have decimal. So we're going to look at our alphabet and we'll notice that P is to the right of D. So we're going to move our decimal point two places to the right. It's at the end of the number so it can disappear. We don't have to have it written and we're going to add our percent sign. So our answer is 25 is 10% of 250. So now here's another question. 40 is 20% of what? So now this time we're looking for the principal amount, the original amount, because the of gives us that little hint. So we're going to fill it in. Question mark, we don't know the original, times 0.20 is 40. And so we're going to write it out mathematically. Remember we're dividing now because we have part of the question and the answer, so we have to do the opposite. So we're dividing 40 divided by 0.20 equals 200. Answer is 40 is 20% of 200. Let's recap. This is our percentage sentence structure. We read it from left to right. The first blank is the original, the principal amount. Of means multiplication. The percent becomes a decimal number for computation to do the arithmetic. Is means the equal sign and the answer is the product of the question. Then we have to change our percent and our decimals back and forth and the way we remember that is we move our decimal point, we look at the alphabet as our little reminder and if we're going from decimal to percentage we're going to move it two places to the right and if we're going from percent to decimal we're going to move it two places to the left. Here is some of the academic vocabulary that we use during this lesson. Remember, you're going to take these words and write the definitions in your own words and draw pictures so it's easy for you to remember their meanings. Percent, decimal numbers, multiply, divide, product, and computation. I hope you found this video useful as a model for your own teaching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel for the latest updates. Your comments are always welcome. You could also visit the webpage for copies of this presentation and additional teacher resources. Thank you for visiting.